Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Volleyball Source 2023 Men's VNL Preview. My name is Rob St. Clair in Chicago. That is Everett Delorme in Toronto. And we are very excited for national team season. Uh, VNL is awesome. It's even more awesome that Everett and I are going to be there in Ottawa for week one, talking about a bunch of these teams. But first, uh, before the tournament kicks off on Tuesday, June 6th, uh, we've got to talk about all 16 teams. We've got to talk about the format a little bit and make some picks towards the end. So I'm excited to do this this video, Everett. Uh, you ready to get into national team season, my friend? Yeah, I mean, we're already in national team season. That's as true. <laughs> we have the women. We did the women last week. The women's VNL is going on literally right now. I do believe there's a game on right this moment. Um, but the men haven't gotten started yet, uh, and they start next week. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked for, for national team season. It's going to be a big, it's a big year this year, 2023. Big year. So the VNL, we play it every year of uh, just the first of many uh, national team tournaments this summer. We've got VNL, then we've got the Continental Championships, then we've got the Olympic qualifiers. So uh, uh, lots, so, lots and lots of volleyball to get to. Lots of storylines. I mean, we've been covering the club game all year long. So if you're uh, if you're just jumping back into following volleyball this national team summer, uh, you're in the right place because we've been following all the teams, all the players, uh, as they've all been playing up around the world in their professional clubs. Now they're back with their countries, and we kind of know what's going on. So uh, you're in the right place. Uh, we're going to get into all the teams, um, all the sort of format, everything you need to know about the Volleyball Nations League. Let's start with who the teams are. Everett, take it away for that. All right. The Volleyball Nations League is made up of 16 teams that are going to be competing over the next month and month and a half. And now we have core teams. So those are the main teams who are always in the tournament. Those are the teams who have the money to pay. They have TV rights. They they host, uh, amongst other things. And then you have the challenger teams, the teams who are always on the bubble to get relegated. Uh, just like Cuba came up through the Volleyball Challenger Cup last year and will have to do again next year. Um, these teams are, you know, not not really that safe. So the core teams are as follows. Argentina, Brazil, France, Germany, Iran, Italy, Japan, Poland, Serbia, and the USA. Now, goes without saying, those are some of the biggest teams in the sport so it, it kind of makes sense why they are the core teams unlike some of the teams that we see on uh, the women's side not naming any names korea the challenger teams uh, go as follow bulgaria canada china cuba who came up as i said through the volleyball challenger cup last year the netherlands and slovenia now the bottom ranked team of those challenger teams will go down to compete in the Volleyball Challenger Cup, uh, just like Australia had to do last year. And the winner of that Volleyball Challenger Cup will be promoted into the 2024 edition of the Volleyball Nations League. And to get into the Volleyball Challenger Cup, every zone has their own qualification tournament for that as well. So it is quite an extensive process to get your way into the Volleyball Nations League. So for the schedule of the 2023 Volleyball Nations League, we have first what's called the preliminary round, where sort of sort of the, the regular season, if you will, uh, that consists of three weeks of preliminary round play. Uh, week one is June 6th through 11th. Week two is June 20th through the 25th. Week three is July 4th through the 9th. And the way the preliminary round works is each of those weeks, the 16 teams in the field will be split up into two groups that go to two different places in the world. Uh, so eight teams to each of two spots. Uh, week one will be going to Ottawa, Canada, including Everett and myself. We will be there. Also in Nagoya, Japan, which is hosting week one of the women's. So going to keep that going for week one of the men's. Week two, we're uh, all European in Rotterdam, the Netherlands, and Orléans in France. Week three, uh, finally, the VNL returns to the United States in Anaheim, California, and also back to the Philippines in Pasay City. So that's the six sites for the preliminary round. Each of those weeks uh, runs from a Tuesday to a Sunday. So that is six days uh, in each site. And um, of those six days, every team in, that goes to each site will play four matches in six days. So in total, every team will play 12 preliminary round matches. After the, uh, after the preliminary round, the top eight uh, ranked teams will advance to the finals, and Everett will we'll talk about that in a second. But it's worth pointing out that each team only plays 12 matches, although there are 16 teams in the tournament. So every team will play 12 other teams, but there will be three teams that each team does not play. So it's always interesting to see uh, who gets what draw and who they get to play versus 
who they don't get to play. Um, also, of the eight teams that are there at each site that week, you're not guaranteed to play all of them. Uh, you're only going to play four matches each week, so it's not really, I wouldn't say it's accurate to call it a pool. Uh, it's just sort of a group of teams that are in one spot. So you play four matches in six days every week, then you have a week off to travel to the next preliminary round site. Uh, do that for three weeks, and then we move on to the finals. Oh, Rob pulling out the French there with the oh, yeah, Not bad, not bad. Well, like he said, uh, the finals are going to be going down July 19th through the 23rd in Gdansk, Poland, in the beautiful Ergo Arena. Might be one of the best venues we have for volleyball. Uh, I, I absolutely love it. Now, this is going to be an eight team single elimination bra a bracket. So, you need to qualify in the top eight of the 16 teams to qualify for the finals. Now, Last year, the way they did it is if you were the host team, so it would be Poland this year, you, if you finished uh, in the top eight, you would automatically get that number one seed. And if you finished anywhere outside of the top eight, you would get the eighth seed. This year, they're not doing it that way. If you're finishing anywhere within the top eight, you're going to hold your seed. So if you finish third, you finish third. Um, but if you finish outside of that top eight, then the field obviously will just move down to the top seventh and you will be the the host team Poland will be slotted into the eighth seed. Now given that it's Poland, I think it's really, really hard to imagine them falling to the eighth seed, but man, this has been a crazy year for volleyball, so who knows what's gonna happen. Okay, as for where to watch every match of the 2023 Volleyball Nations League, it is on VolleyballWorld.tv, uh, Volleyball World's over-the-top streaming platform. I think it's uh, about three years old by now. Its debut when the VNL was in the bubble in Italy in 2021. Um, this, uh, as, as much as we make fun of Volleyball World and Volleyball World TV, this is actually a pretty good platform. It's all in one place. Uh, live and on demand. Uh, there are a handful of promo codes as well floating out there. So join the Volleyball Source Discord. Uh, the link is in the description. We could potentially help you out with getting a little discount, but um, it's worth the money to pay a little bit a month for Volleyball World TV to watch every single match of the tournament. Now, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, 2023 is a big year in the volleyball calendar, and VNL is just the first of, of such events. And the calendar is, is jam packed because, of course, we got the VNL over the next month, month and a half. Then you're going to have the Continental Championships later on at the end of the summer. And then at the end of September, we're going to be seeing the Olympic qualification tournament. So those teams who win their pools are going to get a direct bid into the Olympics for in, into Paris for 2024. Yeah, and that's kind of how we look at basically every VNL summer is there's always there's always kind of something else <laughs> that that we're always, looking forward yeah. to later in the summer that might be a little bit more significant than the VNL in terms of like winning the tournament. But we got to keep in mind now with the way that the world ranking point system has changed, it's no longer about how you finish in tournaments that determines your world ranking. It's the result of every single match. So every single match, won and lost, it depends on the result, the set score, your world ranking, your opponent's world ranking. Your The world ranking movement is going to change every single day of the VNL. Mm -hmm. And like Everett said, like you have to win your pool at the Olympic qualifier or top two in your pool of eight at the Olympic qualifiers later this year. If you don't qualify that way, the remaining five Olympic bursts will go to straight up the five highest ranked teams in the world at the end of the 2024 VNL. And so that's why the world ranking points really matter every match on the line. So you can't necessarily roll out your B team for every single match this tournament. Um, you've got to you've got to kind of toe a line between giving your superstar players some rest who just finished their club seasons like two weeks ago versus playing good enough volleyball to one, qualify for the VNL finals, try to win the tournament, and two, keep your world ranking decently high. Now, the way the teams are going to manage these roster situations and trying to figure out, you know, do they want to get some of the younger players in? Do they want to go for the wins, for the points, and obviously make it to the playoffs? Is There's a 30-person roster that they nominate uh, at the beginning of the VNL. So all teams have designated 30 athletes that they can pick and choose from over the course of the next three events leading up to each of those events they're going to have to pick a 14 person roster and those 14 athletes are going to be the only ones available for those games and 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 those matches so it it's really comes down to the coaches do you are you going to pick are you going to go with like a little bit 
more of a younger squad to work on a little bit of development get some of the rest from your better uh, players who have been playing a, uh, during a long club season or you're going to go for the win in the points because that's what you guys want so it really depends on each team and each coach and each federation to see how they really want to manage that that situation yeah and some of these teams have started to be kind of consistent year over year with with how their strategies go like some teams always send a B team week one. Some teams always send an A team the entire tournament. Some teams uh, give their star players the entire V and now off. Like it, it always kind of depends. And like like we said, it, it, you got to toe that line between having success in the tournament, winning matches to keep your world ranking high, but trying to give some of your important players, maybe some of your older players, a little bit of a break. Because like Everett said, they've had a very long club season. Uh, there's only, only so many swings or so many jumps that their bodies can take. And uh, of course, we, God forbid, we give our athletes an off season in this sport. No, never, never in volleyball, right? All, all year round. <laughs> One thing important to note, too, about the VNL is that there is a, a mandate on how many of the, the athletes from last year that they have to return. So you can't just keep off your, your stars off the roster. You have to feature a certain amount of your athletes from the previous year. And uh, again, some teams, their teams will look very familiar uh, if, for this year versus if you watched last year. And some teams will not. Uh, some teams will look brand new. There'll be a bunch of new young names. And I'm excited to get into all of them. So uh, we're actually going to jump right into previewing each of the 16 teams, uh, looking at a little bit of their rosters, who they have, who they don't have, who their coach is, and a little bit about where they sit in the world right now and sort of their general strategy and goals for each team uh, heading into this field. Okay, up first on the list of the 16 teams for the 2023 men's VNL, we're jumping into this alphabetically. We're starting off with Argentina, the Olympic bronze medalist from two years ago, right now sitting at eighth in the world. They finished just outside the playoffs at last year's VNL and eighth in last year's world championship. And kind of a question that Everett and I have had over the last couple of years since that Olympic bronze medal is where does Argentina go from here? It kind of seems like their generation of players that accomplished that incredible feat have kind of just been coasting ever since. They're, they're the the urgency for Argentina to like to win tournaments or to medal at things like VNL hasn't really seemed to be there since that Olympic win. But as far as their roster goes for VNL, it's it's the Olympians uh, with the notable exception of Facundo Conte, uh, their superstar outside hitter who's kind of carried their offense the last couple quads. Um, it seems like he is moving a little closer towards retirement. But they've got Luciano Dicheco, one of the best setters in the world. They've got Bruno Lima, the, pr the primary scorer from that Olympic Games in Tokyo. They've got Ag Agustin Locer, one of my favorite middles in the world. They've got Santiago Denani, who's a world-class libero. Uh, Marcelo Mendez, a really experienced coach. So Argentina, my, my question for them is the outside hitter position. In Conte's absence, they've got a lot of kind of like B-level, decent but not outstanding outside hitter options. And they need uh, consistency in both the ball control and scoring areas. See if they take a couple weeks to try some players out or if they try to jump on and take take advantage of some opponents playing B teams and try and win some matches early. I'm curious to see because uh, this should be a team that should make the playoffs. They missed out on that last year. Looking to see them do it this year. All right. Next up, we have Brazil. And I mean, Brazil is Brazil. They, they are what they are. And hopefully no one lets them off the hook. Now, Brazil, they're always going to be at the top. But last year, a little bit a little bit weaker uh, at the VNL. Um, they finished sixth. They lost the USA in the quarterfinals, but then they did redeem themselves with a bronze medal at the World Championships. Currently ranked fourth, which I do believe is probably pretty low for Brazil, but they are in the middle of a of a changing of the guard, if, if you will. But we're still going to see some of their biggest players, of course, uh, Ren Del Zotto is bringing back Bruno, the absolute legend. But we did see Fernando Kraling, a.k.a. Cachopa, take over for the majority of the World Championships last year until that bronze medal match. Now, he did suffer uh, an injury, but we saw him come back to Monza a little bit later in the season. So it's going to be really interesting. I kind of think they're going to give the reign to Cachopa because things that I've heard coming out of Monza and what we saw from the World Championships last year, to me, he's truly going to be the future. Uh, of this team. Leal is on this list, but there has been some some rumors and some notes that he will not be playing throughout the VNL and from what we're hearing he has not he is not in Ottawa training with the team. But of course this is Brazil so they've got plenty of other athletes to go for. Lucas in the middle. Um, of course you got Flavio, Allen 
and um, just plenty of other players. I'm excited to see if there's any other young guys, especially on the outside, that they're going to be able to uh, bring to this roster. Now, there is a few guys missing um, from from this team. Isaac down the middle, and of course, Wallace with all of that drama that he's been going on. I doubt, I highly doubt we're ever going to see him in a Brazilian national team jersey ever again, given all of the drama that, that's gone on with him. And if you don't know what we're talking about, you should go back and watch our old episodes of the 9x9 to figure it out. Okay, moving on to Bulgaria, one of our challenger teams, ranked 24th in the world. That has dropped significantly the last couple of years. 14th in last year's VNL, 20th at last year's World Championship. Not a good summer last year for the Bulgarians, a very proud volleyball country. Got to talk about Alex Nikolov, first and foremost, one of the great young prospects in all of volleyball, 19 years of age. Everett and I saw him last year in person at VNL, coming off a year in the NCAA, and we both agreed that he was the the best 18 year old at the time that we had ever seen ever period then he makes the jump from the ncaa straight to the italian superlega and almost wins a title with one of the most storied clubs in the world so alex nikolov is the guy he is the future uh, looked for him to start probably every match for the bulgarians this summer um, but around him is what i'm curious to see They've got Martina Tanisov, who's a, an, an experienced outside hitter at least, but I know last summer Everett and I were kind of expecting a little bit more out of him. Alex Grozdanov is a very, very good middle blocker. But outside of that, I, I don't really see the world-class talent at the other positions. So they're kind of like kind of forgettable at setter and libero and the other middles. And um, I mean, they've got Rado Parapunov, who's an NCAA guy at opposite. But n what we know right now is that no Svetan Sokolov and no Matej Kaziski for the VNL. However, both of those players are on the preliminary roster. It has been announced that neither of them will play VNL, and that's not surprising for Sokolov. It was very surprising to even see Matej Kaziski, his name, around the Bulgarian program in any way. If you know about this guy, he's, a le he's an absolute legend. He's like 37 years old or something. Uh, won a Scudetto with Trentino this year. He's an ageless wonder, but Kaziski hasn't played for Bulgaria in almost a decade. That relationship with his national team has been pretty fragmented. And so seeing his name even around the team is extremely promising for Bulgaria as they move into Eurovolley and Olympic qualifiers later this summer. Uh, they need a, 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 some sort of a savior to rescue their world ranking. And that just might be the return of the veteran Matej Kaziski. So look for that later on in the summer. But until Sokolov and Kaziski get back, this might not be a good VNL for Bulgaria. All right, now for our home on native land, Canada. Now, if you guys know me, Canada is where I'm from. It's near and dear to my heart. So this year is going to be interesting. Last year was definitely one of our worst years internationally in probably a decade, in well, in well over a decade. 15th in the VNL, just outside of that relegation spot, uh, ahead of uh, Argent or sorry, Australia, and then 17th at the World Championships not even making it out of pools uh currently ranked 16th in the world and this year it's it's going to be difficult uh, difficult still there is the new head coach Thomas Samuel Vujo uh coming in uh who is fresh off a of Champions League with Zaxa so it's going to be interesting to see what kind of impact he can have on this team there are some notable exclusions I mean Shawan Vernon Evans I don't think he's ever going to play for the national team again he didn't answer the call last year and I didn't expect him to this year either I was kind of expecting Blair Band to be back on this roster, but it looks like he might be done with the national team as well after rehabbing an injury last year and throughout most of the season with Friedrich Schaffen. Uh, also notable who isn't on this list is Stephen Marshall, who we saw play libero for the national team at the World Championships. And then Riley Barnes, who had a big comeback to volleyball last year, had a fantastic season for Tokoing in the French League this year, but he will be getting surgery uh, this summer and will be unavailable for the national team. So that does leave a huge hole as Barnes was one of the best left sides in the French League this year. And uh, I was hoping that he was going to be able to scoop up some minutes. Now, looking at who is on this roster, it's a lot of the more the, the usual suspects. Steven Marr had a massive year, probably his best year as a professional ever in Italy. So hopefully he's going to be able to pull, pull that over. Nick Hogue, of course, continues to play 
in Turkey for Arcas and his father and has been on mainstay on this starting roster for now well over a decade. Arthur Schwartz is going to be filling in in the opposite role this year, and it's going to be the first time for the Maple Volleys that we see him over there, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Eric Lepke is on this list. As far as I know, I know f- I'm know i pretty sure he's not going to be playing week number one. Um, he did he uh, con- c- uh, contracted some sort of uh, infection late in the season with Toronto and has played very sparingly, and I know up until like last week, he was still in Minnesota with his wife and son. So I doubt we would see him in Ottawa for a week number one. Uh, and then, of course, the setters. We're going to see that three setter uh, head to head between Blankenau, Epp, and uh, Brett Walsh uh, this summer. So it's going to be interesting to see which direction Semin Vuo goes with, considering he doesn't really know the team that well and had only really joined them last week after winning the Champions League with Zoxa. So I think Canada is really going to have to push hard to beat, especially beat some of those challenger teams to make sure that they stay in the VNL and to get prepared for the Continental Championships and, of course, the Olympic qualifiers later on this summer. Moving on to China, a challenger team on the men's side, despite being a core team on the women's side, ranked 26th in the world, 13th at last year's VNL, but dead last at last year's World Championship. Uh, They were quite bad. Um, that they produced at one of Everett's all-time great lines, and you just got three donged by a team that lost to Denmark. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Uh, they did pull like one of the all-time craziest upsets last year in the VNL, beating Brazil three to zero in Brazil. But then they got gifted a free win by a forfeit against Germany, which was uh, kind of controversial. And for that reason alone, they they were out of the relegation conversation. But they're they're China's firmly in relegation conversation this year. We did see Zhang Jingyin at the outside last year totally break out. He was legitimately outstanding um, and actually went to the Polish Plus Liga for half of this club season. So that's a name to watch. Also, Jiang Chuan is back after a couple years off at opposite. So that's two pretty legitimate arms for China. But that's it. There's nothing else going on for this team. Uh, they will go as far as those two players can carry them. They are firmly in the relegation conversation for this year. Do we even have to talk about these guys? I don't want to fuel Ronnie any more than than we have to. Uh, all right. In all seriousness, welcome back, Cuba, back to the Volleyball Nations League. It's been a while since they've been at this level. They uh, qualified for the, the VNL last year through the Volleyball Challenger Cup and then followed that up with a 14th place finish against or 14th place finish sorry at the world championships they're currently ranked uh 12th in the world although that to me is just based off the new ranking model because all they did last year was beat up on teams like mexico puerto rico the other b teams from north Sica, and then qatar they didn't get any notable wins but hey sometimes it helps not being in vnl when not losing games means you're gonna move move up um, for Cuba, though, it is going to be, I, I do think, in, in all seriousness, I don't think they're going to get relegated. I think they're going to have a, a pretty good tournament. I think this might be one of the most skilled rosters we, we see, especially in the outside position. You've got Marlon Yant, Miguel Lopez, and Osnel Melgarejo all coming back on the left side. Three different guys who can give you very different looks. Of course, Lopez might be the best server in the world. Megarejo is, I think he's kind of the cornerstone of this Cuban team. He passes well. He hits good out of system. He's really, really solid. And of course, Marlon Yant. When Yant Arena wants to go off, he can absolutely be super dynamic. The one position that they do have issues, though, is going to be that setting position. So we'll see how um, Goida is able to work with this roster. Probably a lot of high balls. The one big question mark is going to be Robert Landy Simon. He is on the roster but from everything we're hearing he's not going to be playing vnl at all to kind of work some some new things in all in all i'm not going to lie i'm kind of excited to see uh cuba back in the vnl they're one of the most storied countries in the world when it comes to indoor men's volleyball and they deserve to be there i just hope they lose on night one All right, coming up next, we have the reigning champions of France, ranked third in the world. They won Olympic gold in 2021. They followed that up with VNL gold in 2022, but then lost an incredible match to Italy in the quarterfinal of the world championship to finish fifth. Uh, Notable players on the roster, all of them. Notable exclusions, 
None of them. Uh, every single French volleyball player you can imagine is at Andrea Gianni's disposal for this summer. How will he use them is a question. Because last year in Gianni's first summer with France, he rolled out uh, a lot of the big guns first week. We saw him in Ottawa last year. They rolled out most of the Olympians and uh, were very, very good throughout the preliminary round and then kept kind of that momentum going to end up winning the tournament. But what we know right now is week one, um, France is going to Japan this, this year, not Ottawa and bringing a strong B team at best. A very different strategy from what we can see so far for Gianni for this VNL. We will see uh, kind of how how France's new prospects look because we don't really know that much about them. Like uh, past the 14 Olympians and maybe a couple guys that worked in last summer, we don't know that much about the French development program and sort of the next guys up, at least in terms of national team play. So I'm actually kind of excited to see some of those new prospects. But you better believe when it comes to the VNL finals, France will get there. They will roll out the Olympians at that point and they will be a threat to win the tournament again. All right, next up we have Germany, and Germany currently ranked 17th in the world. They finished 12th at the VNL last year, but if you remember from Ottawa, they actually went 4-0 in that first week and then just dropped all of their matches uh, after that, and then followed that up with a 15th at the World Championships. It's pretty much the exact same roster that, that we saw last year. Uh, Weber, uh, Anton Brem is going to be joining. Last year he was uh, injured and, and wasn't wasn't available. Johannes Tilly, Lucas Campa, two guys who are uh, available to run that offense. And Lucas Massa is going to be playing in the middle. We saw him try to play on the right side last year. Um, or sorry, this past year for Lunenburg. I don't think it really worked out that well. But last year he impressed, impressed Rob and I both quite a bit. Uh, down in the middle. The big explosion, of course, is uh, Grozier, but I'm not entirely sure we're ever going to see him in a German national team jersey ever again. I know coach uh, Michael Wieniarski of Poland is really going to want to improve on their VNL and bring a little bit more consistency from last year's result. 4 0 in that first week is fantastic, but then going 0 and 8 in the next two is not so great. So for Germany, the re I'd really like to see them maybe even push for the playoffs, but at the, at the very least, get maybe 10th or more. All right, up next we have world number 10, Iran. Seventh in last year's VNL, they made the playoffs. They lost actually a, an amazing match, a five-setter to Poland in the quarterfinal, who they've got quite a little rivalry with the last couple of years. Uh, 13th of the world championship, Basically, everybody is back for Iran this year, including a couple guys who, who are back from a year or two off, including Sayed in the middle, uh, one of their Olympians and sort of cornerstones of the Iranian team that became the Iran that we know now, uh, what I kind of called the Marouf generation, uh, even though Marouf, one of the best setters ever, is no longer playing. Some of his old teammates and some of that group are still hanging around. So Sayed is back. Uh, Maisam Salehi is back. He was one of their starting outside hitters in 2021 and at the Olympics, um, parlayed that into a contract in the Plus Liga, then got hurt, and we haven't heard from him in about a year. But he's back. I think that's a great option at the outside, along with guys like Esfandiar and Milad Abadapur. And then, of course, Amin Ismail Najad, the breakout player from last year's VNL. Just a crazy physical lefty on the right side. Blew everybody away at last year's tournament, but then kind of slowed down at last year's World Championship as everybody figured him out just a little bit. We'll see uh, how how high of a level and how high of the consistency factor Amin can bring as the primary scorer for Iran this year. Uh, Vadi is their starting setter. I think he's fine. Um, no way can he fill the shoes of Maruf, but uh, he gets the job done decently. And then they've got a solid supporting cast of characters everywhere else. Iran's sort of the team that can beat anybody and also kind of lose to everybody in a given match, but I would expect them to make the playoffs again. Uh, they, they've got the the consistent all-around talent and the couple guys with experience playing club outside of Iran that can that bring a relatively high level for the most part in the VNL. So I expect them to make the playoffs again, but if they were to win a game in the finals, that would be a pleasant surprise. Now, next up we have Italy, and Italy what can we say? One of the best teams in the world, especially right now. Last year, we did get to see them in Ottawa. Unfortunately, won't be the same this year. Loved watching them play. Loved watching them practice. They're so, so, so skilled. They finished fourth at the VNL last year, just outside of uh, the medals. But of course, made everything better by making that fantastic run all the way to the finals and winning the world championships last year. They're the current world, championship, world champions and European champions and will remain so until the end of the summer. Now, no notable exclusions here for Fer Fernando Di Giorgi. 
all the guys back. You've got Gianelli, Micheletto, Lavia, Romano, Balasso, Galassi. You have this team, and this is a team that is expected to make a very, very, very deep run. I would like to see Fernando De Giorgi work with the lineups a little bit. I think maybe, you know, Gianelli has been played Ginelli's played a lot over the past little bit. And I think maybe we saw that catch up with him over the course of this season with Perugia, especially the end and the way they finish. So when you have, I still think that Ricardo Spritoli is a top 10 setter in the world. I think any other national team in the world would love to have him, of, of course, except for the, a, a few choice ones like Argentina, DiCecco, and USA with Michael Christensen. Otherwise, like if you have Spritoli, use him but this is definitely one of the deepest rosters in a team that is definitely a metal favorite heading into not only this vnl but the euro volleys later on this summer next up we have japan always a fan favorite to say the least uh, they are ranked seventh in the world fifth at last year's vnl uh 12th at last year's world championship not quite as good um everybody's back this is the J japanese team that we know and love led of course by yuki ishikawa on the left Yuji Nishida on the right. Ron Takahashi will be the, the second outside hitter. Masahiro Sakita, the starting setter. Uh, I'm curious to see what they kind of do with their middle blocker position. We saw Go Mariyama um, kind of come onto the scene last year a little bit, but didn't play that much at the World Championship. This is Japan. Japan is Japan. We know them. We love them. They are incredibly fast. They are incredibly technical. They are extremely fun to watch. They're overwhelmingly skilled. They're not big. They're not a good blocking team. They're invisible down the middle, but but they can still almost beat even the elite teams in the world. We, we saw a ridiculous match of them against France in last year's World Championship playoffs. Japan is so, so, so good, but with those just those, those weaknesses in size and blocking, can they get over the hump to start beating the best teams in the world? They, they will always beat teams that are worse than them if they if they play against a team that is inferior in skill and attention to detail easy no problem for japan against like the bigger but sloppier teams that they beat those teams no problem but can they beat the frances the italy's the polands the united states is of the, even the brazils of the world those are the more difficult matchups for the japan and those are the teams standing in their way of meddling at major tournaments so i think that's the same storyline going into this year Japan will make the playoffs. Japan is absolutely good enough to make the playoffs, but can they win one or two games in the playoffs, beating those teams in the world ranked above them? I'm not convinced. Now on to another one of the challenger teams, another team that is on the biddle, the bubble, sorry, and that is going to be the Netherlands. Now, the Dutch team is uh, a team that is usually pretty good. Last year, they finished eighth and just made it into the playoffs, losing to Italy in the quarterfinals and then they followed that up with a 10th at the world championships and currently ranked number 13 in the world still behind cuba i mean that's 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 just terrible to me but they're going to be bringing back pretty much the entirety of their squad we'll, we'll see how piazza can mess this one up uh, as well but you, of course you've got namir abdel aziz one of the best outside their opposites in the world wessel kimik going to be running the uh, the offense benny twinstra and of course michael parkinson down the middle they also do have Varto Termat on this roster but generally we haven't really seen him play too too much on the right side I'm not gonna lie I would kind of love to see it he did beat Namir in the finals of the uh the Efler League in Turkey this year while playing for uh Zirat Bank so I would like to see them kind of switch it up just not week one because I really really want to see Namir uh in, in play live in Ottawa because last time I got to see him play live he was setting back in 2013 for the Dutch which is feels like a decade ago it literally was it literally was a decade ago uh back when he was a setter so yeah that it's interesting to just to, to watch his progression like that I would expect the Dutch to really push for a playoff spot once again uh even though they are one of those challenger teams I don't think they're really on the bubble to get relegated much as this much like teams like Bulgaria, Canada, and China are. Next up, we have Poland. Now, this is one of the most interesting teams in the world every year, uh, one that demands a lot of media attention uh, from Polish media and otherwise. Currently, the number one team in the world. And as I was doing, look, like looking at the rankings, I was surprised to see Poland all the way up there because last year they failed to win uh, again. They go another year and they failed to win a major tournament. 
bronze at the VNL, silver at home at the World Championship. And for any other program, that would be an amazing summer. Not Poland, in my opinion. And Coach Nikola Gerbic this year, uh, his job doesn't get any easier. We talk about all the time on the 9x9 nine nine and otherwise, Poland's outside hitter group is absolutely insane. They have five Olympic caliber starters at outside hitter, and Gerbic is going to have to figure out how those players are going to go. They have Wilfredo Leon. Don't forget, uh, I know he didn't play at all last summer for Poland. They've got Wilfredo Leon healthy, ready to go. Tomasz Fornal was the MVP of the Plus Liga this year. Camille Semenyuk had a relatively very bad club season, but was the MVP of the Champions League two years ago. Bartosz Bednors looked like one of the best players in the world the last two or three months. And Alexander Schliefka is one of the un most unique, and I would probably say most important players on the Polish team. So their outside hitter position alone is going to be fascinating to see what Gerbich does. Everywhere else, they've got the usual suspects. Bartosz Kurek is back on the right. They've got some options behind him. Marcin Janusz is back at setter. They've got a couple options behind him. Uh, Jakub Kochanowski, Mateusz Biniak in the middles. They've got some options there. Uh, I would really like to see uh, Jakub Popivchak be the primary libero this year. I would like to see him start to phase Pavel Zatorski out. Both are great options. Um, the only notable exclusion, as you can see there, no Fabian Zizka at setter. Thank goodness. I'm sick of watching this guy set. Uh, I know Gerbich was, was thrilled to be able to leave him off the roster. How does Poland attack this summer? What what rosters do they bring? Last year, week one, they brought a very strong B team. It looks like they'll do the same uh, going to Japan week one this year. Poland needs to win a tournament. Poland is going is gonna to play the VNL. They're going to play Euro Volley. They're going to uh, go to the Olympic qualifiers. Poland needs to win. Poland needs to win a major tournament uh, just to kind of uh, answer some of the questions of their fan base, answer some of the questions of their media in their country. One of the great volleyball countries in the world, but for some reason just can't figure it out when their backs are against the wall in a medal round of a tournament. They've continuously come up short in things like VNL and Eurovolley, and they're going to get a chance this year to right the ship. And Gerbich does not have an easy job in roster choices, but he has the talent to win everything Poland plays. Fascinated to see how they do this year. On to Serbia now. And Serbia traditionally is one of the top teams in the world. They have great, great volleyball culture. Uh, but recently it's been a, a little bit weaker. Last year they finished 11th at the VNL and 9th at the World Championships. And they currently sit uh, 11th in the world. Now, this year the roster does look a lot better than last year's. Uh, you're going to see Kovacevic, uh, Ivovic, and Luberic all on this roster. Even uh, Alexander Antanasevich is back there, uh, as well as the twin towers of Korgaskinen and Lisniac down the middle. Although Lisniac, he did have surgery, or he was injured at the end of the season for Trento and did not play in the Scudetto finals. So it's going to be interesting to see if he's going to be a part of this team. A few uh, exclusions they have, and I think the biggest one is going to be definitely their setter, Jovovich. Who is going to fill in as the starting setter for this roster? It'll be interesting to see. Of course, uh, one of the guys that we will dearly miss, and one of the guys that we're going to miss reading out his stat line is Dusan Petkovic. He's been a mainstay for Serbia over the past few years, and we've seen him a lot in Ottawa over the, the a number of the years. But uh, unfortunately, he won't be there. And then Pekovic, their libero, uh, won't be there either. So it's really interesting for Serbia. They've got some of the bigger names on the roster, but some of their key pieces, you know, Jovovic and Pekovic, who really st stabilize things for them, aren't going to be available at all throughout this competition. So where Serbia is going to land is a really, really big question mark for me. For me. But for without these guys... I don't know if they have a shot at the playoffs. I, I'm I'm not sure they do, especially with some of the other that we're seeing some of these other rosters. I'm gonna do two in a row here now to set up the Rob to the USA last, and now we have Slovenia. Slovenia currently ranked ninth in the world. They finished tenth in the VNL last year on the outside of the playoffs, but of course, getting to host the World Championships just really reinvigorated the squad and maybe gave them a little bit of advantage. Uh, last fall where they ended up going all the way to the semifinals and finishing fourth just off of the podium now we keep on thinking it's going to be the last breath for this golden generation of slovenian volleyball that's won countless european medals and really helped elevate the level of of slovenia i mean i remember back in 2012 when they were losing to slovakia and couldn't even get into what was then the world league 
Now, when you look at this roster, it's all the, no the notable st suspects. You got Tonchek Stern, you got Pyank down the middle, Kozmernik, Jabul, Earnout, of course, the Rock Mozic, and Ro Gregor Ropet running this offense. I would really like to see The Rock be given some playtime. Last year at the World Championships, it was clear that Kretu was going with his the, the old guys and that older generation and really didn't really give uh, Mozic all of that much play. And now Mozic wasn't as required offensively this year for Verona since they had some other high, high flyers and, and big scores. But we did see him be one of the top scorers two years ago in the Italian League. He has the ability to put up a lot of numbers, and that's what I really, really think they're going to need uh, this this summer for, in, for the Slovenian national team. I'm also interested to see the fact that they have Kretu now for a, a little bit. Last year, they had Lebedu for the Volleyball Nations League. He got fired after what they believed was a subpar performance finishing in 10th. And then Kretu came in and was able to push them all the way to that fourth. So I'm excited to see how he can affect this roster. And I would really expect them to make a push and make it into the playoffs and make a trip to Gdansk at the end of this event. Okay, last but not least, team number 16, my beloved United States of America, ranked sixth in the world. A silver medal at last year's VNL, uh, losing a crazy five-setter to France in the final. Uh, kind of a pleasant surprise to have made it that far, but then sort of an annoying world championship where all we did was lose to Poland twice in Poland and end up finishing outside the, the semifinal round. So sixth place there, sixth in the world. Um, notable roster inclusions, there are several. Matt Anderson is on the roster for VNL. I'm a little surprised by that. I expected him to take some time off. He certainly will take the first week or two off, um, but he took all of last year's VNL off. So seeing him as an option on the right side is great. Max Holt is back. I could, we we kind of just lost track of him for a year or so there. Went and played in the Chinese League this year. He is back in the gym. That's good to see. And then uh, the outside hitter position, TJ DeFalco, Aaron Russell, Thomas Jeschke. That crew of three guys is as good as anyone in the world. Uh, Jeschke in particular, once he came from the Chinese League to the Turkish League midway through this club season, was absolutely outstanding. And TJ DeFalco's one was one of the best players in the Plus League this year. So I feel great about this United States team, depending on who they bring when. Micah Christensen, I think, is, is the best setter in the world. Eric Shoji is a top two libero in the world. Um, however, the middle blocker position, other than the, the legendary David Smith, who was the MVP of the Champions League at age 38, I would like to see that position get younger and better. I, I don't know about Jeff Jendrick as kind of the future. Uh, he got exposed at the World Championship last year. I would like to see some Taylor Averill, but he just turned 30. Uh, so that, that position is a bit of a question mark. Also, Micah Ma'a is in the gym this summer at the setter position after taking last summer off. How do we attack this summer? I'm always not sure. Uh, last year, we brought a very strong B team to week one. Um, I thought they were going to go 0-4. They, sure enough, they turned it around, went 4-0. Uh, who's going to be the fourth outside hitter? I really hope it's not Garrett Mwagatutia, but we know uh, John Sparrow's affinity for UCLA guys. It, this, is the, uh, this is the United States. This is the United States we're talking about. We're going to make the playoffs. We are that good. Uh, I, I get to see them week one in Ottawa, which is going to be amazing. But can we win? We haven't won a major tournament since the 2015 World Cup. It's been a while, and I would really like to see uh, legitimate hardware for the United States this summer. I would like to see Spira bring the A team to the finals and then go and try and maybe win the thing. As we push towards Olympic qualifiers, it's just kind of be, going to be kind of a weird summer for us. I will be doing a full USA men's preview later on this week. Um, so definitely look for that. I'll dig into all the rosters in a lot more detail. But I want to win. I, I'm not sure if I would pick the U.S. to win, but I want it. I think it's possible, and then that, that's what I want for this VNL. I want them to focus on it. I want them to prioritize it, and I want a gold medal back to the States. All right, now now we're going to discuss uh, a few different things. You know, pick our winners, maybe an MVP, talk about some of the new new players and stuff like that. And Rob, I think we should pick our winners first and foremost. So Let's I do think it. I think you should get us kicked off here. Who who are you picking to win this event? I've got a repeat. I'm gonna I'm gonna go repeat. ahead and pick France. Yeah, I've okay. got a re repeat with France. Uh, I am I'm interested to see 
if Gianni goes with less of a roster for at the preliminary round, that might hurt their seed going into the finals. But that just uh, sets them up to just run train through a difficult bracket with an Olympic gold medal squad. Like, uh, at their best, France is so hard to beat, man. Ingapet, Cleveno, Patri, Brizard, like, Chinineze, Legoff, and Grabenikov. Like, that starting seven is is nearly unbeatable as long as they don't go out too hard the couple nights before when they get to the finals in Poland and they will I, I think France is is incredibly dangerous uh, I think they know what it takes to have success in major events and I, I've got the repeat for me I'm going with Poland I mean I, I know I can really you think they, you think they get it done you think they figure <sighs> it out <laughs> I really hope they do for for their sake you know I think it would be good for volleyball to for Poland to win uh, a VNL and I mean with this roster I think they just have so much talent it would be so hard um, not so hard but it would just uh, I just think that they can do it I really hope that um, Gerbich is able to manage this squad and manage all of the different egos I don't think there's any enormous egos on it but I think Poland, which might have the most media scrutiny of any vo of any volleyball country, especially right now, I think this team is really going to have to band together and enable to perform. So, how he picks these this this roster and how they they go or are are down the stretch, I really think is going to affect them because let's be honest, not as many teams have five quality outsides like you said and two world class offsets. Like literally, you can't find a hole in this roster. No, so I think really they're going to be I think they're going to be a little bit healthier and a little bit fresher once it comes to the end of the season. So this is why I continue to continue to pick Poland and I think they're going to win. OK, yeah, well, maybe they figure it out. So uh, in that same vein, pick an MVP. If Poland wins, who's their MVP? I think Bartosz Kurek is going to be their, their MVP. I'm, I think one not of the one things, of the outsides. Interesting. No, not one. Of, not one of the outsides, because I think that they love feeding Kurek when he's there. He's just such a pure scorer. And uh, I, yeah, I really think that he's going to put up some big numbers for them, especially in the finals. If once they make it there, at home and everything, so I think Bartosz Kurek is going to be the MVP for Poland in in this uh, 2023 VNL. How about how about you? Who are you going for MVP? Uh, if France wins, I've got Jean Patry. I'm still okay. kind of I'm still kind of uh, on the take that I think Patry should have been the MVP of the Olympics. I think he was so 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 good in the playoffs in that event. Uh, that I think he deserved that MVP nod. I think it's I think it's time that he gets that sort of recognition. Um, I think that he kind of flies under the radar because of the way that he plays. He's not as flashy and like as sexy of a playstyle guy as like an Inga Pet or like some of the some of the other French guys that are that are really just visibly special to watch. Patry is just so rock steady. He hits great high shots. He doesn't make errors. He doesn't bring the ball down into the meat of the block. He's a good blocker, a good server. Uh, I think it's time for Patry to get the recognition he deserves. I think if France wins, he's going to be a big part of it. All right. Fair enough. Now, next up, um, who do you think the breakout player of this tournament is going to be? Who do you think is, is going to be known across the board once the VNL is done? Man, this is always a toss-up because inevitably every single VNL, there is a player that comes out of absolutely nowhere <laughs> that nobody knows, nobody expects, and ends up blowing the world away. And last year it was Amin for Iran for sure. He came out of absolutely nowhere and took the world by storm the first couple weeks of the tournament. I'm going back with Iran, and I don't know if this totally counts as a breakout player because he's played before, but as I was saying in the Iran team preview, I think Maisam Salehi is going to have a big summer. I think uh, it counts as a breakout player in my opinion because everybody's forgotten about him. He hasn't played volleyball in like a year, but he was so good in 2021 and at the Olympics that he immediately got a spot on a playoff team in Olsten in the Plus Liga before hurting his shoulder. Like that that's a big jump for an Iranian guy to go from, you know, playing in country to playing in the Plus Liga. Really only Miladi Badapur had done that. And uh, he's he's big, he's an outstanding ball controller. He's got a great arm. He hits the ball high. He's really good out of the pipe. Like he, he doesn't really have any weaknesses. And I think that it counts as a breakout guy because we have forgotten about him because he hasn't played in like a year and a half. So uh, my son Salehi of Iran is my pick. I'll look out for that guy at their outside spot. All right. Fair enough. It'll be interesting to see if he can get some playing time this year uh, for Iran. Now for me, I picked a guy who unfortunately isn't on the week one roster, but is a guy who we saw 
play for Paris earlier this year and then switch over to Toronto. I think Ibrahim Lawani is really one of the future guys for France. He's so long. He has so many shots. Uh, he's just a pure talent, and there's still a lot of ways to go with him. You know, we saw him playing with maybe subpar teams, if you will. I know Paris is, was all right this year in Toronto, just, just barely staved off relegation in the Italian league. But I think if you get Lawani with the likes of Grisard and, and Toniuti, perhaps, then, man, like, what can be done with a talent like that? So if he does make the roster, I expect him to turn a lot of heads. Yeah, he did. I mean, he in that brief maybe month and a half in the Italian league, he he kind of exploded. It was very impressive. A kid that we didn't know yeah. anything about and was putting up like eight points per set there for a while, yeah. which was nuts. So yeah, I, I hope to see him too. I think that'd be really cool. Yeah, All I'd right. love to see that. Last but not least, Everett, of the six challenger teams, who gets relegated? This, I, this is going to be a bit of a spicy summer, especially for one of the two of us. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I absolutely know that Canada's on the hot seat. You know, we finished 15th last year, didn't make it out of pools at, at the World Championships. So this is definitely a redemption summer for Team Canada. And it's really going to see, it, this really depends on A, how healthy we are, and B, what are some of the young guys who are going to be coming up who can who can put their mark on it? Now I'm going to do a, a Team Canada preview uh, in a couple of in the next coming days we're gonna have to figure out when with with everything going on but i don't think canada is going to get relegated i think it's going to be bulgaria other than alex nikolov i really don't see this team having that much success and and that much talent i was just reading through a uh, post done by Setan sokolov in terms of how he views the national team and how it's working it just seems that there's so much dysfunction right now within the the ranks of Bulgarian volleyball and I don't think that Nikolov is going to be able to make that much of a difference and I think so many uh, coaches and teams and athletes watched Nikolov really struggle and serve receive this year for Lube and there's no way that they can put, put him on the right side like Lube did and I think they're really going to target him so for me I think Bulgaria is going to get relegated how about you Who, who's your pick I, I could definitely see Bulgaria for them for me it was between Bulgaria and China and I'm going to pick mm -hmm. China uh, China they they do totally dodged a bullet last year. Like I said, they got a random like gifted forfeit win against Germany, and then they didn't really have to worry about relegation the rest of the summer. But at the at the World Championship, they were bad, like bad, like the worst team in the tournament, like worse than Qatar, like way worse than Mexico. Like they, they were terrible at the World Championship. And even if Jiang Xuan comes back, I I don't see it. I, I think the 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 weakness at like they're they're a terrible reception team. They have nobody in the middle. They have nobody at second outside or setter or libero. I, I am not impressed by China. I, I don't see a game on their schedule where I would pick them to win. Yeah, fair enough. I could see that as well for China. To be as it was as a same for me. It was really a toss up uh, between these two teams. And I mean, I'll pick either one of them as long as it's not Canada. That's oh that's God, uh, that's. Yeah. Uh, that's all I hope. That's that's all I want. Man, I'm, I'm so fascinated by Canada, man. I can't wait to see your preview. Uh, Everett will be at the Canada versus Brazil scrimmages, uh, which will be up up here on the Volleyball Source channel, those baseline highlights, which will be amazing. And there's going to be a fascinating first week of the Tuomas Samelvuo era. And the best part, Everett, is that we're going to be there. We're going to be in Ottawa for week one. Canada is going to be there. The United States is going to be there. Uh, we're going to get so much behind the scenes action and interviews and all this incredible footage and, and content from that tournament. We're going to learn so much about those teams. And the best part is that all you fans get to follow along with us. So right here on Volleyball Source, we're going to be covering the heck out of the 2023 Volleyball Nations League from the site. I can't wait to be there in a couple of days. Yeah, absolutely. That Canada, the game one of Canada versus Brazil goes on tonight. I gotta right after we do this, I gotta finish packing and then get, drive my butt to Ottawa. So it's gonna be uh, this. This marks the start of a long, too long, but fun and exciting two weeks. So I, I, I absolutely can't wait. So uh, if if you guys do are coming to Vienna, Ottawa, let us know. Come yes. say hi. Yeah, absolutely. We'd love to chat. We'd love to see you, especially if you're part of the Discord. And if you're not a part of the Discord, what are you doing? Why aren't, why aren't you? Yep. Come join, join it. It's the best, the best online volleyball community in the world. It is just, just fantastic. We get so much value out of it. There's people from all over the planet who love volleyball. So the link is in the description here of the YouTube video for the Volleyball Source Discord. Um, 
subscribe here for sure if you're not already this is going to be a huge summer we will be in ottawa i've got the usa men's preview coming out very soon everett will do a canadian men's preview going to have the highlights and the hitting lines videos from those brazil scrimmages then we will be on site in ottawa monday uh what is that june 5th everett or so we're going to be going live at least once a day so much footage so much coverage from vnl in ottawa and beyond so volleyball source is your spot we'll see you in the discord we'll see you uh in our next video peace nice 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 bonus cat pay the cat text pepper say hi to the camera <laughs>